your first cycle in FTL. Yo, that's exciting news. If, if uh, where's my map, Spire? Hello. If you haven't checked out the delightful game FTL Faster Than Light, now 10 years old this year. Highly recommend uh, picking it up on Steam. It's on sale for $2.50, which is a steal for one of the best roguelites ever made. Hey there, Faley. What is the difference between a Star Wars fan and polyamorous people? May the fourth be with you has a very different meaning depending on which one you are. Oh, man. <laughs> Happy May 4th, everybody. Orca asks, what percentage of Baylor viewers are Americans? About half, last I checked. Um... The U.S. is by far the, the biggest group for the Baylor audience, and then there's also substantial populations in Canada, Germany, France, and then smaller and smaller slices as you look at the other parts of the world. A few, few Brits, a few other parts of Europe, some Australians. Not too many outside of that, but uh, definitely the, the primary three, I would say, are... Um, Oh, ne Netherlands. Yeah, there's a few of those, too. The big three are the U.S., uh, Canada, and Germany in terms of quantity. But, you know, the those have, other than Canada, more representation by virtue of a larger population. For example, I can have more German viewers than Norwegian viewers while having a higher percentage of Norway watching the channel than of Germany. Just because the population of Germany is larger than the population of Norway, right? It's really how many viewers per capita do I have? Doom Brink says, the max HP doesn't seem to be worth it to me. Does picking max HP also raise the current HP? Yes. Yes, and that's the real benefit to taking this third option here. Lose all gold for 12 max HP is absolutely 12 more hit points to work with in Act 1, which, depending on which boss you're facing especially, can be really valuable. And uh, certainly the Silent can put 12 health to, to good use. I don't think this is a, a particularly terrible starting bonus, truthfully. Although I'm probably more likely to take a common relic here. Particularly on Silent, who really uh, enjoys common relics. How come we're missing some health? That, uh, my friend, is one of the many, many ascension penalties in Slay the Spire. Our challenge for the year involves 100 wins with every character on A20, the most difficult level of Slay the Spire, with 20 cumulative penalties that stack onto you to make the game nightmarishly difficult. One of those many, many... Um, Modifiers is Ascension 6, start each run damaged, combined with Ascension 14, lower max health. Uh, normally a silent on the base difficulty of the game starts a run with 70 out of 70 hit points. Instead, we start with 59 out of 66, which is definitely not as good. So I'm thinking a uh, common relic here. Looking at the map, we have, well, one, a disincentive to to lose all the money initially. Lots of events here. Uh, I'm ideally thinking about this particular series of floors. Lots of rest sites and elites here uh, with a potential early elite, too, if we're willing to, to do that. And that's one, two, three, four, five rest sites, three elites, which is an incredibly juicy act one for sure. We'll have lots of relics, lots of upgrades, if we can survive. Uh, although prepping for that first elite could be a little daunting. We may mark the shop in gold here. I think these are the two reasonable lines to get to that elite. And that's going to be dependent a little bit on uh, the cards we get out of the first few combats. Could do something like upgrade neutralize. I don't think that's going to be hugely valuable here. Much rather have the relic, uh, or again maybe just 12 health if I wanted to kind of tank my way through. Don't think that works all that well for silent. Let's grab a relic here. Seven max health. All right. Well, instead of 12 max health for 
99 gold, I get 7 max health for 0 gold. I'll take it. I suggest you are there less starting paths than usual. Um, the spire seems to be under construction. Maybe, maybe in a few months it'll be finished. Barbanator, would you say that our starting bonus here was very good? Because I would. Although the joke wasn't very, very good, unfortunately. Simply having seven extra health, um, and just one more relic on the relic bar is always appreciated, too. I don't think I have any real complaints here about this start. It's really going to depend on the uh, potions and cards that we get from the first few fights, how well this ultimately goes for us. This jawworm's giving me a hard time. Please stop blocking, sir. That's not quite fatal. I'm going to block this and I might regret it. 22! Guess what? I'm one short. That's okay. We can just take one more damage. Terrifying Jawworm fight. Not bad, though. We only lost a couple of hit points. We do get a good potion. Well, maybe not a good potion yet. Liquid Memories lets us return a card from, our, from the discard pile into our hand at zero cost. Liquid Memories is only as good as your best card is. So here at the start of the run, it's not that good. But if we can find a good card, any good card, to use it on, then it'll be great. Starting relic that says one potion and one potion capacity. So half of a potion belt plus an immediate benefit. I don't think that would be too good. I think that'd be that'd be really cool as a starting bonus. Start with one more potion and one more potion slot. You know, in lieu of another character's starting relic, I think that would be very reasonable, actually. Let's grab that poison stab. I think Poison Stab is a perfectly acceptable first card. It's upfront damage, plus damage over time, pretty decent damage for one energy, uh, and especially helpful for our act boss here. Hexaghost at the end of the act is going to require us to be able to have some decent damage output. We're immediately offered Shining Light, two random upgrades in exchange for 22 hit points. I'm more than happy to rest at uh, one or more of these rest sites in order to get that health back. And I think that... Oh, yes, the relics might still be broken, huh? Yes. Actually, I should fix that. I will take these upgrades. We get two defense upgraded in exchange for the health, which seems fine to me. And I'm going to go for the extra combats here. I don't think we need get I don't think we're going to need the store. These two upgraded defends are gonna greatly improve our block efficiency. Double? Poison stab? Hmm. Generally, poison works better with more of itself. So I actually quite like that. Let's do it. Two poison stabs are better than one, as the saying goes. Pretty sure that's a saying, anyway. Easy fight there. We got another potion. An ancient potion allows us to block one debuff. It's kind of interesting. 
We're offered our first area damage card, Dagger Spray. I don't think the Silent has the luxury of ignoring the first area damage card very often, especially when there are elites around. That's a pretty good card for Liquid Memories, actually. Nick OSG says, if I could theory craft and add a relic to the game, what would it be? I want a counterpart to Art of War in the game. Art of War gives you a bonus if you don't play any attack cards. I want there to be a relic that gives you a bonus if you don't play any skill cards on your turn. Or maybe if you only play attack cards. I'm not sure which which one I would prefer the distinction to be. But I think it, it I would want mine to say something like, if you play no skills during your turn, gain one strength at the end of the turn. Or maybe even one strength and one dexterity, depending on... That sounds maybe a little too powerful, though. But I'm not sure how reasonable it is to not play any skills, so... Be fun to, uh... Be fun to do. Play no skills during your turn, retain your hand. Yeah. I also think this after image is indeed pretty solid here. After image, one block per card, further augmenting our block game. Helping us out quite a bit. Hmm. It's really all about this elite. I think we're very bad at the sentries fight currently. I feel like we need this dagger spray to be upgraded and in our deck. And heck yeah, I'll buy some better potions. This gives me a lot more confidence. We'll look at two. I'm just looking to swap the ancient potion. So look at two, get, take the better of the two. Um, technically, a Liquid Memories is going to be better than an Explosive Potion because I'm going to have an upgraded Dagger Spray that does 12 damage to all enemies. So I can just use this for 12 damage to all enemies. Although that's only if the Dagger Spray is in the discard pile. And we can use uh, Liquid Memories to maybe something like Triple Poison Stab Gremlin Knob on turn one. It is these suckers. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it would be them. And here we go. Get absolutely destroyed, you nerds. All right, do I do that again? It feels excessive, actually. Backstreet Skeeter, thank you so much for lucky 13 months of support. Hmm. Yeah, we might have a rainy day in the future, and I've got very good block cards, so let's just not for the moment. I don't think we're going to take much damage from here. Yamausa, thank you for 13 again. The double 13. The re 13 and ning. Or something. Is there any need to take two? Probably. Let's just end the fight at 35 comfortably. That feels really good. Vajra giving us one point of strength already makes Every card that we've added to the deck so far, a little bit more impactful, particularly the Dagger Spray. That's really good news. And with one strength, a Blade to Dance also looks pretty dang good here, allowing us to add three shivs to our hand for 15 damage. Caltrops is also a reasonable take here with Hexaghost being our act boss. I think I'll grab one Blade Dance. Don't really like more than one blade dance until we have a relic, well, other than Vajra, another relic that interacts well with it. But it is a pretty good upgrade. Also like upgrading maybe one of the poison stabs for a bit more poison. I guess I can do both. Get poison stab upgraded. Let's grab a relic, which is Mercury Hourglass and 69 gold. Yes, excellent. We now deal three damage to every enemy every turn, and we're rich. 
These are good things to have happened. Okay, play dance next. And we might even be upgrading Neutralize shortly. Is this lethal? Certainly not a uh, block hand. No, not quite, huh? I would have to liquid memories to save six. Not worth it. My face. Get him, Hourglass. Predator is pretty okay. Predator is big damage and card draw. Don't think it, it's that good to take an early acrobatics. What a Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch also nice with the Vajra. Means I wouldn't have to upgrade Neutralize or wouldn't benefit as much from upgrading Neutralize. We just upgrade the other Poison Stab. Maybe a Survivor even instead. I think I'm going to try the early Sucker Punch. One cost attacks feel a little bit better with the point of strength here. Greetings, Gremlin Gnorb. So I could Liquid Memories this Poison Stab here on turn one. This is definitely the fight we kept the uh, memories for, is this gentleman right here. By Liquid Memories on the Poison Stab, we deal another 10 immediately and three more next turns. We do 10, 13, 16, whereas if I do the Poison Stab plus next turn, and use that to get it back. I could also get Blade Dance back. That feels more impactful, as that would be 20 immediately, or this would be 12, 16. Same over two turns. Better to hold on to this for the moment, I think. Does this hand do enough damage? Oh, actually, this is 13 immediately. Excuse me. 43 minus 6. Minus... 14 minus 20. Not a kill if I just play all three of uh, the Dagger Spray and the uh, Blade Dance. I could use Liquid Memories here to kill, or we could try to kill him next turn. AC through Shifu, best of luck with that last vinyl. Woody77 asks, how do you evaluate when to stop adding attacks in Act 1? Does depend on your character. My usual advice is around 5 added damage cards in Act 1. And then you really want to upgrade your damage cards rather than adding more at that point. So we're, we're pretty much now at the point of um, not adding further damage cards unless they were really, really good for some reason. The specific threshold that I personally use is you can stop adding damage cards when you're ready to beat your act boss. Um, but that is not an evaluation you may necessarily be able to easily make. Can I do 250 damage in nine turns is the real question here. That's how we beat this Hexaghost boss. So I stop adding damage cards when I can do 250 damage in nine turns. That's not something you'll see me punching into the calculator very often, because I don't uh, discreetly math out the whole thing. But I, I have a pretty good uh, rough estimation of how many damage cards I need to be able to comfortably defeat Hexaghost. And we're, we're about there now with the Magic Hourglass. And that's right, nine turns is the magic number for Hexaghost. That's how many turns you have before Inferno. So you get nine draws, nine turns to deal damage before you die. Or, well, before you take big, big sad. 22 minus six minus five. Let's see. Eight health. So if I don't draw both strikes next turn, I would have to 
do the thing. Or I could just play Blade Dance, take eight, and win guaranteed without using the potion. I think that's what I'll do. Get him, Arglass. Aha! Okay, well, there's a good reason to take a Blade Dance. Shuriken is here. Every time we play three attacks in one turn, gain a point of strength. We're offered another Poison Stab, a Backflip, or an Infinite Blades. You'd think Infinite Blades is good with Shuriken and Vajra, but I tend to find that Infinite Blades is just a bad way to gain shivs. Although it, it could help against Hexaghost a little bit. I'm pretty happy skipping all of these cards, even the Backflip. And just letting our Shuriken put in most of the work. So I don't think, for example, that we need a third Poison Stab. That feels redundant and not in a good way. Next fight will be either Legavulin or the Sentries. We can rest here to get a bit more health to work with, but I don't necessarily need to. That's right, the upgraded Infinite Blades makes it an 8 rather than being 2 shivs per turn. If upgraded Infinite Blades was 2 shivs per turn, I, I would take it more often, that's for sure. Upgrading Neutralize is pretty good here, too. Although it might make more sense to upgrade the Sucker Punch, just for one more damage. I like that the Neutralize is free. I mean, realistically, what are the odds that I take... I'm not going to take 21 damage in either of the elite fights we're about to get into. I can rest afterwards if I feel like I need to, but with the Hourglass... Three centuries really shouldn't be a problem, you know? Since they're each taking three damage per turn, pretty easy to fell one or more of them. There's Dagger Spray. Get him. Can't quite finish you though. Close. Keep the potion. Take uh, going down to 17. I think is actually completely reasonable here. For the Hexagos fight, we even get a Tori reducing unblocked attack damage from five to one. As well as another option for poison. Although, what about a slice? Genuinely, zero cost. It deals seven. It's hardly amazing, but it definitely fits into what we're doing here. Wicked Agent says, what would I need in order to feel like Infinite Blades is not a detriment? Dead Branch is a pretty good start, actually. Dead Branch might be the, the, the all I need, actually, is is, uh, is just one Dead Branch. But there also needs to be a paucity of other options for shivs. So I'm only going to take an Infinite Blades if I've been looking for Blade Dances and I can't find any. Because I would rather just have the Blade Dance. Could also skip and wait for a better card than Slice, it's true. Although I'm not going to upgrade the Slice, I'm going to upgrade... I guess Poison Stab or maybe Survivor here. Let's take the Slice. I so rarely get an opportunity to do this. I'm going to try it out. Survivor Upgrade makes for one of the Silent's best block cards. Providing... 11 at block for 1 energy, plus your dexterity modifier. Hello? Survivor plus? Not today, apparently. Alright, well, we're gonna have to win swiftly. I could use the liquid memories to block for 6 here, but there's really no need to at the moment. Completely acceptable to be Hexaghost with a small fraction of your health left. Not a good time to draw on Blade Dance, it's alright. Get him, Survivor Plus. Show them who the boss is. I 
And already you can see we're doing pretty substantial damage to the ghost. In fact, I'm tempted to play one more strike here. Just take one with Tori. I think that's a good idea. We deal 11 and gain one more strength. This fight's almost over already. You can see that we're way ahead of the required damage curve here. We should have a win next turn, actually. But as these flames light up, that's your countdown to death. Once all six flames of Hexaghost have ignited, they ignite at one per turn here, then your doom arrives in the form of the Inferno. You also see that we weren't going to be able to block this 9 by 2 which is um, guaranteed to happen on turn 7. That can also be a little bit nasty. But there's no need, because the fight's over. GG, we're done. Go next. Our choice is bullet time. Let's me play everything in my hand. Bullet time requires usually either a lot of cards in hand or some very expensive cards to be worthwhile. You also want some kind of draw manipulation to ensure that the bullet time can be drawn alongside the good cards. So we don't have any of that. Tools of the Trade, just a nice inexpensive power. Draw one, discard one every turn. Can be a nice enabler for a hovering kite. Um, and it's also a good way to cycle through your deck more quickly. Essentially allows you to look at one more card per turn, which can be quite useful. It's also a nice way to activate the discard synergies of Silent. Or lastly, the grand finale. Massive damage, but if and only if we can get our draw pile to have zero cards in it. Currently, the deck has zero ways to manipulate card draw, zero ways to retain cards. That makes grand finale pretty useless. And I'll take the tools of the trade instead. Pretty happily here. Interesting set of three here. I already know which one I'm picking, but let's look at the options more thoroughly. Calling Bell gives us a unique, unremovable curse, the curse of the bell, and three relics. One common, one uncommon, and one rare. That's not too bad. Pandora's Box transforms all of our strikes and defends. There's currently ten such cards, although we do lose the two upgraded defends. These don't turn into upgraded cards, they just turn into random unupgraded cards, so those upgrades are essentially lost. Where the Slaver's Collar gives me more energy during boss and elite fights, that is pretty dang good um, when we have a shuriken, generally speaking. But it's very, very hard for me to turn down a Pandora's box when I've got 10 transforms that I'm going to get. Could turn into a lot of different things. Many, many good cards in the Silent Pool we could get access to. Although many, many weaker ones as well. Over the Pandora's Box, I would take um, Runic Pyramid in this situation over Pandora's Box pretty happily, especially with these upgraded defends. Don't think I would take Sneko Eye here over Pandora's Box, but I've taken Sneko Eye over Pandora's Box in other times. Ten bullet times! Yeah, it could also be no block, although we do have upgraded Survivor, don't forget. I would take Astrolabe... Not here, I don't... Well, maybe. Nah, not here. I think I'd rather take Slaver's Collar than Astrolabe. This is a pretty good Slaver's Collar, which I'm strongly considering, but what's in the box? Ten transforms is too good to say no to. You'll love to see it. What a, what a set of cards. Four powers. After Image, Fumes, Accuracy, and Caltrops. But also, Shuriken Juice Galore, with two Endless Agonies that are going to duplicate... So four zero-cost attacks here. A grand finale that, well, that could be useful. Another way to poison stuff with deadly poison. And the choke is even theoretically useful, too. Deck needs some more energy now, but uh, I think it's got potential. Okay, I like this. Oh yeah, actually, before we go further into this run, hold on, I'm gonna save and quit here. 
And I'm going to reboot Slay the Spire with... Slay the Relics disabled, so that I'm not having performance issues. One moment, everybody. Da, 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 da. There. Not today. Okay. Oh, I definitely uh, chose the exact wrong time for that, didn't I? Alright. Same cards. This might be a different act layout. No, it's not. Okay, good. Good. Everything is as it was. So I'm eyeing this currently. I don't know if we can actually handle elites in the later half of the act, but I definitely like getting a couple of upgrades and a shop before anything of importance happens here. What would I like to actually upgrade? This is a situation where I would strongly consider an upgrade on the after image, just because we have so many free cards to play, and because we have so little block otherwise. Right, Ubla. There is a there is a glitch that allows you to re-roll your act, though, is there not? Don't remember exactly how that one works. Let's see, are there any other reasonable options for a path here? These early elites scare me quite a bit. Calculated Gamble doesn't hurt either, actually. Um one of the one of the cool it, kind of synergies we've got here. People often ask me, is it ever correct to intentionally not play Endless Agony and allow it to duplicate again? And the answer is, very rarely is this worthwhile. It's kind of the equivalent of discarding a shiv. You opt out of playing a zero-cost deal four to get a zero-cost deal eight later, so you're just drawing a shiv later on, usually. But if you can discard the Endless Agony in the first place in order to draw more cards immediately via, say, Calculated Gamble, then you're getting instant card draw plus more duplicated agonies later. And that, that can be pretty sweet. So Endless Agony can be well worth discarding in the event of Calculated Gamble or Gambling Chip in order to kind of accelerate the deck in a delightful little way. I don't think any of these other paths are even vaguely reasonable. Zavanavaz, thank you so much for 34 months of support. How many permanent cards? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? Ooh. Hmm. So here, for example, instead of playing these Endless Agonies, I can simply Calculated Gamble. Hopefully drawing Survivor Plus. Yes, and only because I didn't play any other cards. This turns a little interesting. Definitely gonna appreciate the Tori in these fights. Sorry. Thank you. Actually, no. No benefit this turn. Pretty telling uh, shell parasite fight, though. 
fight is normally a very nasty welcome to Act 2. We only took a couple points of damage, though. And then this happens. I have to say, this is one of the worst footwork pluses I've ever seen. That's pretty funny. There's also Blade Dance and Cloak and Dagger. Probably would prefer Blade Dance to the Cloak and Dagger. Two more shivs, but no block. That definitely makes me want to upgrade after image. Speculative footwork plus. Yeah, isn't that a rare sentence? That would have been amazing if we hadn't got rid of our defend pluses. If this was a Cloak and Dagger plus, I think I would consider it, but... I just want to play dance. Greetings, friends. Yeah, look at the look at the power here. Sheer unadulterated power. Optimal. Another early difficult Act 2 fight just obliterated here. It says plus. Finisher is also exceedingly tempting. Duplicating itself based on every other attack we played that turn, which is, well, yeah. I think I'll take one finisher here. Especially with two liquid memories in my hand. Remember, remember turn one bronze automaton? I remember. Oh man, are we... A panache deck? This definitely could be a panache deck. We're playing five cards in one turn, deal 10 damage to all enemies. I agree, we are a Dark Shackles, uh deck, which is to say I'm going to buy the Dark Shackles, because it's a very good block for us. Spoon might be tempting, especially alongside the Dark Shackles, but that means Shivs get discarded, and we do not want to discard the Shivs, although I love the idea of Strange Spoon Endless Agony. That sounds pretty wild. Self-sustaining Shiv generation, kind of. But no, Strange Spoon and, and Shivs is a terrible, terrible time. Do not recommend. Very cheap corpse explosion. It's quite nice, but mm, I don't think so. Is finale the card we remove? Currently feeling okay with removing either deadly poison or fumes. Hmm. And I don't think that we actually Caltrops could also go. Be very happy getting rid of Caltrops at the moment. We have a very good damage plan, although this could be useful later. Kind of. Fumes joke, please. Let me see what I can do for you. Why did the silence become a chemist? She'd heard all about their fume hoods and wanted one of her own. No refunds. All right, we are going to take that panache, and I am going to remove a card. Though well, the options are interesting here for card removals. 
I think Fumes, Caltrops, Deadly Poison, maybe Grand Finale are the current contenders, but we might actually be able to get Finale to work every now and then. Uh, especially if I can get some card draw, like a backflip would be really nice in particular. Is this deck going to take a catalyst? I don't think so. All right, let's start with Fumes then. It's a nice artifact remover, but I don't think I need it. And it's too slow at the moment. Oh dear. This is not as good as the turn one we had last time. Haven't had the opportunity to upgrade our after image yet. It's just reasonable. So I think I Dark Shackles sucker punch the Shelled Parasite and then it actually makes sense to kill the Fungi Beast. Entirely. Because being vulnerable makes us take less than six additional damage here. now. Could Blade Dance and then Gamble. Is there any way to kill this turn? Actually, I think if I Liquid Memory is the finisher, we just have a win, yeah? Makes more sense. Because we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, let's just Liquid Memory is the finisher and win here. That sounds good to me. Wow. You don't even really need to uh, get the finisher. Get a potion back. That feels like a pretty good use of it. And there's that backflip I asked for. Cool. Pretty happy with it. Gonna be very honest. Order. See it. Another calculated gamble? Yeah. Dodger Roll would have made that speculative footwork plus uh, finally pay off, too. Alright, first upgrade is going to be after image. I want this to be in our opening hand every time. I think our next upgrade is going to be the panache. Ooh, another card removal. Deal. Please lose me. Deadly poison? Genuinely? Yeah, genuinely. Where's the deadly here? Can I do two elites with these? Potions? I think so. On 43 health. I don't think that I need to rest here. We can rest here if we need to. You're a kind soul. Receive my purification. It's definitely a late game ceramic fish by all standards here. Nine gold per card we add. Maybe another 90 gold or so. I think I'd rather take the blue key. What's Panache's beta art? Ironclad having a good time. Pouring in this, his heart into that presentation. Good stuff. Thank you, Tori. Actually, perfectly okay with that. I'll play the gamble just to save the one health here. These are fine cards to not play. Weakness is so good against the Book of Stabs. This might be a bit of a problem. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Can I win this turn if I Liquid Memories Finisher? Math time. 8 plus 6 plus 6 plus... Sorry. 8, 6, 6, 12 from the Poison Stab. 18 from the Dagger Spray. I've played one, two, three, four, five attacks, so this would be nine times five. Forty-five plus another ten times six, sixty. So yes, Liquid Memories just kills the Book of Stabbing right now. I'm probably going to do that then. And yeah, that's factoring for the strength gain from the Shuriken. As you play each of these attacks, the subsequent ones do even more damage. Burn the book! Beautiful. More energy in the form of Happy Flower is a beautiful thing. How about a third calculated gamble? Sure. What's the worst that could happen? that Dark Shackle so far. No reason to play... Well, I guess I could draw the Agonies or the Panache. Or neutralize. Get him! Deeply satisfying. Piercing Whale, there's another really good block card. The AoE counterpart to Dark Shackles, letting us lower uh, the strength of all enemies for one turn. This is very, very good. Prepared could be interesting as well. Needs an upgrade, unlike the Piercing Whale. I'll take a Piercing Whale. All right, elite fight number two is the three Slavermans. Got bonus energy this turn, so I'm not too concerned. I've also got, uh, you know, Kill potion. This is not enough to kill, right? Usually go for the red guy first. Let's just verify. Six plus nine plus eleven. Twenty-six. No, we can't kill the red guy this turn. So I think I'm gonna backflip. Now I can kill the red guy this turn. That was a good backflip. <laughs> you ever just backflip into four attack cards for free? Good stuff. <laughs> Let me pull block. Easy. Easy peasy. And that's why you take the backflip. Oh no, Tori doesn't do anything. Disaster. Simply disaster. Alright, we took one damage and spent no potions during the slaver fight. Now we have a white bee statue giving us a potion after every fight. And we have an Adrenaline, giving me energy and card draw right away. I like it. I like it a lot. That's a pretty good upgrade, too. Do I really need to upgrade these Calculated Gambles when I have three of them? I don't think that I do. Wouldn't mind upgrading the other Blade Dance. Wouldn't mind upgrading Accuracy. Lots of pretty good upgrades at the moment. Ugh, my nose is so itchy today. Help. Witch Chath, help. We can get a couple one-time energy upgrades, upgrade Tools of the Trade or upgrade Adrenaline, both help with that. Accuracy makes the shivs permanently do more damage, I like that a fair amount. Actually, I think I like that more than upgrading Blade Dance. Let's start with this. 
The reason I like upgrading Accuracy more than Blade Dance is that um, it doesn't punish us more in later fights where our cards are counted against us, the Heart and Time Eater. Damage to all enemies twice. We can make that nine to all enemies twice. We just put all the attacks in Grim Leader here. She'll never know what hit her. Got him. And let's gamble these two, see if we can get a real card. That's a real card. Cory saves one. Good fight. Might as well play this. The fight's not going to last another long enough for us to redraw that. As I suspect, things are about to come to an end. Pretty swiftly next turn. Attack me all you like, it won't help you. Bottle Lightning lets us choose a skill to have in our opening hand every combat. We can bottle Adrenaline, we can bottle Backflip, we can bottle Blade Dance. There's Dodger Roll again. Hello, Isaac Next TV. Welcome, welcome. If you like Slay the Spire, you're in the right place. You can bottle a Calculated Gamble, too, which is somewhat reasonable with a large opening hand. But I think I like bottling Adrenaline, just to get us as many powers as impossible as play. It also helps me block better on turn one, alongside our after image. Take the Swift Pot over the Skill Pot. That's a reasonable uh, reason, then, to upgrade Adrenaline, actually. More energy on that all-important first turn. Let's do it. We have a upgraded adrenaline in our opening hand every combat. That feels pretty good. Set some finisher. All right, that's no turn one kill, but it's a good start. We got tools to trade and after image in play. We got a point of strength and. Oh, I can use the Fear Potion to remove the other artifact layer here. Okay, let's do it this way then. There we are. gonna discard these gambles. Well, I want to play the Snaker Spray, I suppose. GG! There's only a five turn bronze automaton fight, which is a pretty good indicator that our damage output is in a good spot. I'm not too proud to take this Wraith Worm. I think it's an excellent addition to the blocking game of a deck that has not much of a blocking game. Wraith Worm says, gain two turns of intangibility at the end of your turn, lose one dex. Not that we have a lot of dex, any, uh, like, dex affected cards, anyhow. So I think Wraith Form is currently pretty dang good. 
There is also Thousand Cuts, a yet another way to deal damage. We just showed off, though, that we are doing plenty of damage. In fact, if you want a card like Thousand Cuts, allow me to direct your attention back to Panache, which does more damage per card play for zero energy. We don't need another one of these cards. Take a Wraith Form. Remember that run where we took 1,000 cuts over many Wraith Forms? I do! We didn't have a Panache Plus on that run, though. Oh, man, Sacred Bark. <laughs> Could have gone Alchemize, White Beast Statue, Sacred Bark. Man, Fusion Hammer, huh? Hmm. Not being able to upgrade Wraith Form, very sad. However, more energy of return, very good. A little bit unsure what to do. Upgrade all cards? Feels like a reasonable answer. Hmm. This deck definitely would appreciate some extra upgrades, but... Fusion Hammer is pretty, pretty good. Could use the Empty Cage to remove some of the worst cards in the deck. That would make the finale a bit more viable. Perhaps remove Choke and Caltrops. Or choke in one poison stab. Apotheosis would help us out a lot. I think I am going to take the energy relic here. Do you know that we offer channel memberships now? Support the channel directly here on YouTube for as low as $5 a month and get awesome perks like a custom badge and emojis. But most importantly of all, I'll do exclusive Q&As, uploading a video response only available to members so you can hear your questions read in my buttery voice. Click the join button below this video to get started. Back to the video. Uh, and we're going to try to try to avoid the downside of the fusion hammer. There's two things we can do relating to that. One, simply don't go to rest sites in the first place. Burning Elite says, joke's on you! <laughs> what? Oh no. Oh no, it's all gone horribly wrong. Hello? <laughs> well, heck. I didn't see that coming. And we have time meter to deal with at the end of the act. Come on, Shovel or Guria, please. For the love of heck. And we must go to the shop, too. Guess I'll take an event beforehand, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's definitely a fusion hammer that bit me in the butt. Very quickly. I'm rather bemused by that. Get him, Hourglass. Right. Deflect plus zero cost block looking all right. Still want some things that contribute every now and then. Choke plus is not particularly overwhelming. Don't have enough skills for the... I don't trust the snake oil. I uh, don't have enough skills for the flechettes to be particularly good. So we'll grab a deflect here. Sometimes it'll be relevant. Or sometimes we just play the break form anyway. cards until we have seven in our hand with a free upgrade on it. I actually really like an expertise now that we have four, sometimes five energy per turn. That's pretty cool. And yeah, I'll take a take an event over one more combat here. It's time to spin the wheel, chat. What'll it be? You know what it is. It's stabbing time. Good thing I have all this healing coming up. I am heartbroken at this uh, tough bandages, but I'm happy about the orange pellets here. 
Also pretty happy about another blade dance, actually. Mm. But that's sad. Four thought is here. Finally, our grand finale can function. What does the bandages actually do? This gives us three block whenever we discard a card during our turn. So anytime I play Calculated Gamble, we get three block per card. Basically turning these all into imperviouses in addition to what they currently do. But instead we'll take orange pellets, allowing us to remove debuffs from ourselves by playing a power attack and a skill in the same turn. Still planning on keeping this finale, believe it or not. I am going to remove Caltrops, I think. Decided these aren't going to be useful. And heck, I'll take one more event. It's a relic, and that relic? A Duvu doll, giving me another point of strength with which to begin my combats. That's a chonky Reptomancer. is a sad draw. Let's try to fix that. That's a bit better. Just a little bit better. And then five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Play everything. Thank you, Tori. There it is, the Kunai. Every time you play three attacks in one turn, gain a point of dex. And uh, that means I'm taking a backflip here because we want the card draw, we want the block. So now we have a few, not very many cards of scale with dexterity now, but a few, enough to actually at least get started. We also have a very good potion here with the orange pellets. And now I sleep for a bunch of times instead of upgrading anything. Dang it, <laughs> stupid act. Smiling mask is a slap in the face. I sleep for nothing. Click at an event. It's another relic. It's a regal pillow. <laughs> I sleep for even more nothing. Why not fight elites? I had to take this path because of the position of the burning elite. We were forced to take a completely useless path. Uh, because I hadn't gotten the, the green key yet. The other option is not go to Act 4. So, yeah, that happened. <laughs> that happened. That's what I'm talking about. Oh wait, whoops, order. Oh no, if only I had some way to get all this health back. Acrobatics? Yeah, I think we want more card draw still. I like the current potions though. And now for triple jaw worms. The re Jaw Wormanier. Yeah, 
Beautiful. And there's the one more blade dance I wanted. With the kunai, I'll definitely be taking a third one. Okay. Gotta sleep. How much strength makes a rule with holes worth it? Uh, I would say three or four, but this is another case of of unnecessary. The, the real question for this deck is how much more damage do we need? The answer is zero. Even if it's really, really efficient damage, we just don't care about more damage because we can kill any of the threats in the game as long as we can survive long enough. And that's the actual tricky part, making sure that we survive long enough to actually benefit from all the damage. So here, for example, I'm going to play exactly 12 cards against Time Eater. Get rid of all these agonies. I don't want them anymore. Get as much strength and dex as possible. Just two points, apparently. Take one. And then cry. Um... Could Liquid Memories Calculated Gamble? I don't really want to. We're going to get to heal the full anyway. Hmm. Just going to play Tools the Trade here. Actually, wait. If I play one more card, I can save a lot of health because of Tori. So I should play one more. I guess is going to be Poison Staff? Or technically choke is better, huh? Did you play choke first after all? Knowing that I needed the two block for the Tori. You are a stinky jerk. Just wanted you to know that right now, sir. Play this and then try to do only three cards next turn, or I can just hold the timer over here. Try to full block this. Let's see if I regret that deeply. Probably. I don't. Good. Choke. Poison stab. Finisher. Perfect turn to have drawn Dark Shackles. This is an unacceptable turn otherwise. Way too much damage headed my way here. Bring that down to a 4x3, why don't you? One of the biggest things you can do for yourself during a Time Eater fight to make the fight go smoothly is on a turn where Time Eater is debuffing like this, bring Time Eater below half health, 240 hit points or uh, 228 if you're on lower ascension. That interrupts the Time Eater's attack pattern essentially, forcing them to spend their next turn healing themselves back up to half HP. Assuming they live at all. Never mind. It also just killed the Time Eater on such a turn. And the fight will also simplify that way. Awaken one shouldn't be too much of a problem. There's a few powers I'm going to play. However, um, by improving our stats with the Shuriken and Kunai over time, we're going to have an extremely easy time outpacing this boss. Perfect. Play the tools. I don't think I need to play accuracy, though. Bit of an awkward 
draw next turn, wouldn't you say? Oh, now it's horrible. Wait a minute. But I've done it. They all said it was wrong. They had no idea. Can gamble here? That's probably reasonable. Actually, I can do it now with gamble, right? If I play one, two, gamble six cards away, don't worry about next turn. It's time for grand finale. And a ton of finisher damage. I'm not playing this. And here we go, Dark Shackles on the good turn. I think now I am going to play Panache. Relinquish your strength, dear sir. Oh wait, I did that wrong. Well, never mind. Relinquish nothing. Yeah. I definitely bungled that. I meant to play Piercing Well before killing the Awakened One there. Instead, we'll just use the Wraith Worm to be victorious here. Should be nice and easy. While we're attacking the skill. Tangible this turn and next. No downside to ourselves. No dexterity loss per turn or anything like that. Chips. Grand finale. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this finale playing? Bear your daggers and deal at 1912. Good year. Alright, we gotta sleep. It's required. Technically, the Regal Pillow has healed zero health. We rested so many times. And there's that apotheosis that we wanted, but it's unavailable. I cannot take it. I, however, can take another backflip, another calculated gamble, and slash or a card removal. Seems fine to me. Tyra Rage Lilia, dad joke for the crowd. What kind of doctor would you find in the spire? A cardiologist. I think it's time to remove this unupgraded poison stab. It's been serving us pretty poorly. All things considered, new refunds. Like a comedian on an elevator, that jerk joke worked on many levels. Contemplating flex potioning for this fight. Probably better off in the heart fight. Although we're gonna get a potion back. Actually, no, I'll use it here. 
Let's use it here. And that means I want to kill the shield first. Uh-oh. I can liquid memories that if I need to. I should remove one artifact on turn one. All right, I'll liquid memorize that. Shoot. So close. Dex Potion, which will help a little bit. Another Deflect, which will help a lot. Um, two Backflips, two Deflects, plus the Kunai is going to be the bulk of our block generation here. And I would like to bundle just a good old Ordinary Neutralize, so that we have Assured Weaken on turn two in this fight. We are going to take some damage from the Beat of Death. Every time we play a card, we take one damage. Uh, sorry, two damage. We get one block back, so we're taking somewhat reduced damage, thankfully. Just going to go ahead and Calculator Gamble this whole hand. We want to get to our powers and to our Blade to Dances. Like so. Good blade dance finisher turn this is. Let's go survivor rather than poison stab so we get to not take so much damage this turn. And since we're taking damage per card we play, we have to make sure that we are uh, what am I trying to say? We're able to mitigate the penalty of a large number of card plays by I knew that was going to happen. Grr. By having a lot of dexterity and block cards. Alright, I think I gamble again. We're trying to find either accuracy or tools the trade. Maybe we're better off I haven't played an attack this turn yet, so I think we're better off playing the Blade Dance, playing one Shiv, and then gambling. Okay, yes, yeah, so and we get our powers here. Let's get the tools first. Dark Shackles blocks completely next turn, so no problem there. I'm no longer vulnerable or frail. This no longer looks as bad as it used to. This seems pretty fine, actually. Could use that this turn? I don't think I need to. I don't think I need to. Oh, I'm gonna take one beat per card here. Ugly swiftly here. I need to play the choke in order to do the thingy here. 
We have Tori protecting us next turn. We're fine here. We're fine here. Get some more things. Realistically, we only have until Beat of Death becomes three to win this fight, I think. Yeah. After which point, we're going to get killed by our own cards. Which would not be very pretty. Yeah, I'm going to have almost no health left at the end of this turn, actually. Do as much damage as possible here, though. This would absolutely be kaput the end of line if it weren't for Tori here. But we're alive. And here's where Beat of Death now becomes three, so I have to... I have to survive. Just a little longer here. Come on. Get the damage. Didn't even use the Wraith Form, actually. There it is. G. Mr. Hart. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.